Okay, uh, AP students, uh, I'm back here for the hopefully last installment here of our guided discussions for while I'm gone. Uh, this is going to be the first half, uh, or maybe even a little bit more than that, of guided discussion number six. Uh, guided discussion number six focuses on American life in the 1950s. Um, and so uh, remember, you can check this out and you can look at the, the list of, of notes here, which you have to take. Um, by looking into uh, the PowerPoint, the presentation that I share with all of you. All right. Uh, first thing I want to talk about is the Eisenhower presidency from 1952 to 1961. Um, in the election of 1952, uh, the Republicans uh, and President and, and war, war hero Dwight D. Eisenhower beat Democratic candidate Adelie Stevenson. Um, Eisenhower's economic philosophy. Uh, during the time of his presidency became known as dynamic conservatism um, and modern republicanism. Eisenhower agreed to, uh, to basically t not to tamper with many of the New Deal social programs already in place. However, he proposed almost no new social welfare laws. Um, the, most the, the most significant piece of legislation passed during the Eisenhower administration was the Highway Act of 1956. Um, it committed $32 billion to the construction of 41,000 miles of interstate highways across the country. Um, in the 1950s, the economy continued to boom, as did the number of suburbs. Uh, we're on the growth of suburbs right now, in case you're wondering, uh, bullet point wise. Uh, small cities, uh, basically, sub suburbs were small cities surrounding. Uh, nearby big cities. Um, the reason why suburbs increased uh, is really three, there's three main components to it. Number one is the federal government and the state and local governments had expanded the money spent on highways. And um, as we talked about with the Highway Act of 1956, which meant that travel back and forth was easier than it was uh, previously. The second reason is that the Federal Housing Administration and the Veterans Administration offered low interest loans for homes. This is often as part of the GI Bill. So that's another reason as to why um, there was the growth of suburbs. And the third reason was that the population had greatly enlarged because of the baby boom. There were just more people with bigger families that needed a place to live. So you can remind you if uh, I'm going too fast for you, you can always press pause and rewind and, and we're good to go. Um, during the 1940s and early 1950s, William Levitt built three Levitt towns, uh, one in New York, one in Pennsylvania, and one in New Jersey. Um, these Levitt towns were suburbs with thousands of small four-bedroom ho houses that looked almost exactly alike. The houses came with a refrigerator, cooking range, and a washing machine. All of the interiors were the same, but there were four different house facades for variety. Um, in general, the growing suburbs were almost exclusively white. Meanwhile, minorities such as African Americans and Hispanic Americans moved to the inner cities. Um, and of course we talked about that and you read about that in your book as to how that's a disturbing trend that continued on and, and, and left a lot of poverty in, in inner cities. I want to talk about women during the 1950s. Um, the role that, uh, excuse me, the, the past role uh, that was greatly revived for women in the 1950s um, was this idea of the cult of domesticity or separate spheres theory. Basically, um, women began to go back into the house, or that was what society wanted them to do. Um, a Life magazine cover story said, of all the accomplishments of the American woman, the one she brings off with the most spectacular success is having babies. I'm not sure what some of you girls in class feel about that, but that was what uh, society felt was the proper role for women during this time. Ironically, though, even though this is what was being pushed by um, I guess uh, the, the values of society that women should be at home, um, the percentage of women that were working outside of the home in the 1950s actually went up. Uh, most of this was in clerical and service uh, work, 
And um, these became known as pink collar jobs, uh, stuff that women uh, did uh, primarily were, were pink collar. Um, popular television culture uh, shows such as Leave It to Beaver portrayed the ideal family as one that had a father that went out to work and a mother that stayed home, cooked, cleaned, and raised children. Um, however, as we, you've read in The Man in the Gray Suit and, and you've read about, uh, we talked about here, that wasn't necessarily always the case. All right. I also want to talk about the religious revival of the 1950s. During the 1950s, there was a dramatic religious revival as average church att attendance jumped from 48% in 1940 to 60% in 1958. Um, the reason for the religious revival and the Congress of the United States, uh, how they were impacted by it, are as follows. People were searching for spiritual meaning in the midst of materialism and consumerism in the 1950s. Also, uh, there's a big battle against atheist communists. So that was kind of seen as a patriotic thing to, to be religious. Congress actually, in, in response to this, added the term under God to the Pledge of Allegiance and mandated that in God we trust be put on all U.S. currency. All right, we're going to pick up uh, next time that I'm in class with um, well, quite a few notes here about um, civil rights movement and everything else. So just uh, keep that in mind here. We may actually, I may actually give you guys these again, so check that. I'll probably give you another video here about the civil rights movement, and, and, then, um, and then we'll leave it from there. Okay, that's uh, guided discussion number six, part one.